I don't know how else to say this, folks. This is my last video. This is my last video here in the studio. Yeah, here in the studio. I am uh, jumping on a plane after this, and I'm headed to Ottawa as per the challenge that I set out on my second channel, House of Canada. Once that reaches 100,000 plus subscribers, I'll be going to watch one of the next question periods. Well, it's time to pay the piper, and I am going for tomorrow's question period. Caucus Leader Day. That's right. I'll be there. I will do my best to attend Question Period. I'm a little nervous about making this announcement because I don't want like a bunch of people to swarm to Question Period before me and then I can't actually get in because from my understanding, it's first come, first serve. But nonetheless, here I am and I'm being true to my word. Uh, there's a lot of news to cover today. Justin Trudeau is literally hiding from Pierre Poiliev. Pierre Poiliev set out a challenge in Question Period today on for a national broadcasted uh, carbon tax like debate or fight and Trudeau ran away quite literally and he's hiding he's he's gone missing we don't know where he is we think he's going to be there for work tomorrow but we're not sure welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video everybody this can be a good one we got jordan peterson who's taking some pot shots at justin trudeau which is not hard to do we've got a senator who's also taking pot shots at justin trudeau we've got pierre poliev who's taking pot shots at justin trudeau basically everybody is shitting on justin trudeau Rightfully so. And uh, the only person who isn't is Chrystia Freeland. She's sitting in the background waiting for Trudeau to fail so she can take his spot. True fact, you're going to have to stick around for the full video. But before we get into it, I want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel as well as once you are subscribed, there's a little bell icon that shows up. Just do me a favor, click and tap that bell notification so you can actually be notified of upcoming videos. All right, so just as per the, the normal ritual, we're going to start off the video with Look at the polls. Conservatives need a 170 seat majority. Well, it, chances if you're watching this, you're on the conservative side or you want some change. Uh, for a, anyone to be leader, they need 170 seats for a majority. Let's just be inclusive. Uh, conservatives are sitting at 208 projected, 180 bottom line, 226 high end, 99% likely of winning the most seats, 99% likely of winning a majority government. I've said this in the past. It hasn't come true yet, but I do think it will. That You're going to start to see the bottom line of 180 slowly creep up towards 200, where the now then conservative majority or the conservative projected seats instead of it being 208 will probably fall around the 220 225 line that's just my own personal opinion with my own personal projections but of course this wouldn't be one of my videos if i didn't pass a question off to you guys where do you think about that where do you think the conservatives are going to land in terms of seat projections or actual amount of seats that they win Next up, we have Justin Trudeau, who says it's the role of government to make it more expensive for people who don't want to think about the future and don't want to prepare for the future today. Real things not taken out of context, folks. This is, uh, this is scary. Or as Trudeau likes to say, sunny ways. It's sunny ways. There are so many exciting opportunities for people who are thinking about the future. And I think that the federal government's role is in part to encourage people and incentivize people to think about the future and yes, make it more expensive for people who don't want to think about the future and don't want to prepare for the future today. So along maybe? Chance. I forgot the original question. <laughs> but yes, there'll be more money for Alberta. All right. So if you're not thinking about the future, we're going to come and screw you. And you deserve that. That's kind of my takeaway. But I'd like to know what you guys think about that. Does that make you feel good about our current prime minister? Or does that just add fuel to the fire? Next up, we have Senator Don Platt, who says a few days before he hiked the carbon tax by another 23%, a reporter asked Prime Minister Trudeau if he'd be willing to sit down with the premiers who have raised legitimate concerns about their increase. The prime minister responded, the premiers are liars. Real things that Trudeau has said. This is we're living in clown world, folks. You can't make this up. Senator Platt. Senator Gold. A few days before he hiked the carbon tax by another twenty-three percent, a reporter asked Prime Minister Trudeau if he would be willing to sit down with premiers who have raised legitimate concerns about the issue. The Prime Minister responded by calling the premiers liars. Wow. They don't agree with him, so he calls them 
liars. Shame. Funny thing, after he made this accusation against premiers, I didn't hear a single liberal condemn the prime minister for his words. Yet last year, leader, when I called Prime Minister Trudeau a liar, I got called out of order. Why the double standard, leader? Ooh, that's oh, a very Thank you very much question. for your question. Uh, there's no double standard here. Uh, <laughs> regrettably, there are politicians in this country who have been misleading Canadians consistently with regard to the impact of the price on pollution, on the cost of living, on the cost of housings. I am using the words advisedly. They are misleading Canadians and they are do doing so in full knowledge of the facts. Period. Now, with regard to the preamble to your question, um, the Prime Minister has made it clear that he welcomes, and I've made it clear, by the way, in this chamber, welcomes input, constructive input from premiers who have the opportunity, if they choose, to put into place tailored pro uh, programs to reduce emissions in their provinces for the benefit of the planet and their citizens. Right in the liberal Toronto Star that he called the premiers liars, then I can say he called the premiers liars. To be specific, he accused conservative premiers from lying to Canadians, and there were no consequences, no reprimands. Did the Prime Minister forget Premier Fury is a liberal? Did he forget liberal parties in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Ontario also opposed his carbon tax? Or does he think they're all liars as well? That's our goal. <clears throat> the position of the Government of Canada and of the Prime Minister has been clear for years that the price on pollution is the most market sensitive and effective measure to combat pollution. It has also been established by independent third party validators that the impact on the cost of living is negligible. Again, uh, I stand by my response earlier. Wow. So clearly there is a double standard because I have watched Senator, Uncle Senator Don Platt, uh, be called out when he says that Trudeau is a liar. Yet Trudeau can go around and call other MPs liars, or I guess in this case, premiers. Bit of a double standard, but we knew that, right? We knew the Canadian government, at least the liberal side, is full of double standards. Rules for yay, not for not for nay, or whatever the hell the saying is. Next up, we have Pierre Poiliev. <laughs> this is... this this. Feels like a UFC press conference. All right, this Canada is getting out of control. He says that Justin Trudeau is actually hiding from a debate on the federal carbon tax, and Trudeau is not going to be attending today's question period. Now, Trudeau did attend today's question period. He just didn't attend it for very long. Let's take a look. Even his stance, he's like he's like Sean Strickland or something. Like he's just very UFC like. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of funny. I like it. Think, uh, the pre prime minister would actually meet with the premiers on TV. I think he's too scary. Why? Trudeau's in hiding. He's hiding from me at QP today. I just learned he won't show up to debate me on the carbon tax in the House today. But do you blame him? He's losing he most me. weeks. He's losing the debate. Canadians want to axe the tax. There's going to be a carbon tax election. And whether Trudeau hides from me or not, he looks out of breath. He's going to have to face me in a carbon tax election where he's campaigning on hiking the tax to 61 cents a litre. And I'm campaigning on axing the tax. We know what Canadians will choose. Common sense. Let's oh, wait, well, we have you Thank you, sir. Housing. Is the Prime Minister trying to cut red tape with all these pitches? Oh, wow. He looks out of breath. I guess they caught him while he was going up the stairs, and he still took the questions like a champ, like the undefeated, undisputed champ that Pierre Poiliev is. And uh, if you don't believe me, let's take a look at this question period clip where Pierre presses Trudeau and why he won't meet with the premiers to discuss the carbon tax. He met the premiers in 2016. Since that time, he's broken the promise he made them. He said the tax would only go up to 11 cents a liter. Mm. Now, he admits it will go up to 61 cents a liter. He said the tax would make people better off. Now, we have the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report, which confirms 60 percent of Canadians pay more than they get back. The Prime Minister said, and I quote in 2015, Canadians need a PM who will meet with the Premiers. What happened? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
conservative leader continues with his misinformation and disinformation. The reality is the parliamentary budget, budget officer uh, said that eight out of ten Canadians do better with our price on pollution and the Canada carbon rebate. But speaking of misinformation and disinformation, any responsible leader uh, that receives an endorsement and support from proven conspiracy theorist and liar Alex Jones would have immediately denounced that. But that's <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about absolutely that. Absolutely nothing, because those kinds of endorsements fit within his political strategy. All right, so obviously that's a filter. Uh, it's sped up, and I don't know if that's a Snapchat filter. It's a little funny, but you can see the filters going on other people's faces and stuff like that. Um, if you're wondering why I'm stating the obvious, I think there's a new YouTube policy where you have to you have to be very transparent and disclose that something has been digitally altered. So for everybody who has wondered... This is a digitally altered video that we just watched. No, Justin Trudeau's face is not actually that distorted, but it might be a little bit distorted according to some, say, the new polls. I don't know. But it is uh, it is pretty funny that Justin Trudeau did actually mention Alex Jones in Canadian Parliament today. Very weird and very bizarre because by that standard, Alex Jones could go out and endorse Justin Trudeau. In fact... I would encourage Alex Jones and Russell Brand and Joe Rogan and every other right wing crazy nut job person that the media likes to put in that corner, right? I, I would encourage everybody, every big public figure who's labeled a right wing person to go out and publicly endorse Justin Trudeau. Because according to liberal logic, if you're endorsed by somebody against your will or consent, then you are automatically affiliated with said person. Wow, crazy logic. I'm sure that won't come back to bite them in the ass. <laughs> Love to know what you guys think down below in the comments about that one. Next up, we have Jordan Peterson, who's taking some pot shots. Again, Justin Trudeau, he says on X, Pierre Polyev will be blamed for all of Justin Trudeau's criminal negligence by the liberals elite the second he takes office. And, of course, he's responding to this tweet right here by The Economist. It says, when Justin Trudeau took office, a Canadian household earning the median income would cover the cost of owning an average home by spending 39% of their pay, according to RBC. Now, people are spending 64% of their pay. I'm sure that that has absolutely nothing to do with the cost on climate change, right? We're all spending additional taxes. You know that Canadian pollution Canada contributes 1.5% to the world's pollution, right? That's how much Canada contributes. It's a very small figure. Yet, there's, from my understanding, there's no other country in the world that has a carbon tax. So Canada is trying to pay 100% of everyone's pollution when we have 1.5% contribution to the world's pollution. If that doesn't scream, wake the hell up, then I really don't know what will that I mean that's just that's absolutely insane but of course i want to know what you guys think do you think that canada's doing the right thing by trying to pay for everyone's pollution or do you think that we've just gone completely loony bins and we need an election yesterday well you know who's waiting for an election yesterday mr speaker none other than christian freaking freeland an unnamed senior government official says that christian freeland is definitely going to be interested in running for prime minister after Trudeau is gone. She is waiting. And let me tell you, this, this is going to, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or not. I have no idea. We're going to find out right now. But if Justin Trudeau resigns, now we all know that Justin Trudeau is sinking the liberal ship down faster than the Titanic, faster than the submarine, okay? If Justin Trudeau were to resign, Christian Freeland would be taking his place. Now, if you had to pick who would have a better chance, Justin Trudeau, current captain of the ship, or Christian Freeland? I hate to say it, but I think Christian Freeland would actually do a little bit better because at least she would be pulling on the strings of people saying, hey, I'm a female, just like Kim Campbell. Let's get elected. Let's get a, you know, a female prime minister in place, a second female prime minister, but let's make it longer than two months so we can be the longest female prime minister. I think there would be a way more woke angle than what Justin Trudeau is currently capable of, unless Trudeau comes out of the closet or something unless Justin Trudeau does something miraculous and spectacular which we're all kind of expecting unless that happens I feel like 
anybody who could pull bigger numbers than Trudeau would be Freeland. And that's crazy to say because I don't want either of them to run. I want both of them to resign, as do you. I'm assuming if you're watching this, chances are you're fed up with both Freeland, Jagmeet, Justin Trudeau, all of the liberals, all of the NDP, probably most politicians. Um, and the list is, is too long. I'm not going to sit here and name 337 members of parliament. We're going to leave Piero. Piero seems pretty cool. Nonetheless, so seems um, seems like this might actually be the move. We don't know if Trudeau will resign. But if he did, it would give the Liberals one leg up. And that's not something that we want. But I'll pass the question off to you guys. Do you think that Trudeau will resign? And if he does, do you think that Freeland will be able to pull better numbers than him? Please let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, you have more testimonies of people really not making it in Canada. The cost of living is just so unaffordable. Here we go. I'm literally having such a crisis. I literally had like a really good job. I was about to like potentially buy a house, have great friends, great family. I got my cat. And then two months ago, I just decided to move to Canada. Well, I mean, I always wanted to move to Canada. It was like something I wanted to do since I was like 14, 15, whatever. But now I've been here two months. Like I literally can't find a job. <laughs> I just go out with friends, <laughs> just drink basically i literally have like a bachelor's in nursing i'm getting turned away from like receptionist jobs at like a hotel well not even a hotel like an airbnb kind of thing i've signed a lease for 14 months and i don't even have any income right now and it's quite expensive and i'm like looking at furniture because it's completely unfurnished obviously i'm in a brand new country i don't have anything i don't even have a pot of salt or whatever like i've got all those things back in england because i was obviously going to buy a house but now i'm here and i can't bring all that stuff here and it's like i've got so much to buy yeah now you're seeing more and more of this uh, these types of videos and testimonies every single day. And it's it's a damn shame. And as you saw in one of the opening videos of this particular segment, you have Justin Trudeau who says, unless you're actually planning your future out and you're crunching every single penny, whatever happens to you is well-deserved. It's, it's the biggest wealth transfer we've ever seen. It's very disgusting that we're in this, this state economically. And it... it people can't save there is no savings there's not really much financially to look forward to that road trip that summer trip christmas vacation going down to disney world or whatever the hell it is that you want to do with your money people just aren't really able to do that anymore they're having to choose quite literally between their rent or their mortgage payment and food and when you add kids into the mix i understand you bring kids into the world, that that is your responsibility and people that are bearing that responsibility are feeling it on, a, a, if I, I don't want to say a deeper level, but everyone's feeling it to their own capacity and it just sucks all around. It sucks for everybody. And I kind of want to end this video by passing the question off to you. Are you feeling the financial squeeze? Are you hurting financially in one aspect or another? Because I think most people are, and it's just the sad, the sad, very sad state of Canada. But not to end it on too depressing of a note, let's just stop it right there. And uh, yeah, of course, as, uh, as we end the video, I'd like to encourage you guys to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I will see you all in the next one, and I might even see you in Ottawa if that's where you reside. Peace and love, everybody. See you in the next one. Bye for now.